Williams, good ball fake. Wow. Payne at the top. Fires from long distance and buried the three. Cam Payne says, I'm a pretty good guard myself. Left side, three on the way. Front of the rim on Payne, but the tomahawk stomped by Williams. Two, it's Sam, throws it up to Frayer at the buzzer, he banked it in! He banked it in from 35 feet at the buzzer! Hi, everybody, and welcome to Murray State Basketball and the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. Coach will join us in just a moment. A big win for the Racers over the weekend as they opened OVC play 1-0 with a win at Moorhead State. But let's show you what's coming up this week for the Racers before we bring Coach in with the Racers going uh, on a three-game road trip that continues to Tennessee Tech on Thursday night. That's a 7.30 tip-off in Cookville, Tennessee at the Evelyn Center on OVC Digital Network. And then on Sunday, it's a rare Sunday game, 5 o'clock at Jacksonville State in Jacksonville, Alabama, as the Racers will be making their first appearance this season on the CBS Sports Network. And that'll bring us into our time here at the Race Center with head coach Steve Prohm. He's got a big smile on his face because the Racers have won nine in a row and they went to Moorhead State on Saturday and won a, uh, just a, uh, t one of those tough games, 66-57 coach. And, uh, you know, we look back on it and we always wondered what would happen uh, if you didn't shoot the ball as well as you as you usually do, didn't rebound as well. Now you did end up over 50%, but it was a game you guys had to tough it out and you got the job done. Yeah, we toughed it out. I'm uh, proud of our guys for staying the course. Uh, took some bad shots early, uh, some bad turnovers. I didn't make free throws. There was a lot of things that we didn't do well on the offensive end, but you know, defensively we continued to guard. Uh, one of the weaknesses of our team, we don't rebound well. Uh, we work on it every day, <laughs> but it just hasn't translated. Uh, we're not getting dominated on the glass like so we were a little bit earlier. We, we closed that gap, but we'd be, a, we'd be a really good defensive team if we could start dominating on the defensive glass. Okay, well, let's go ahead and roll the tape and uh, take a look at it from Johnson Arena on Saturday night with the Racers at Moorhead State. Uh, the Eagles, they've got some really good pieces, Angelo Warner, uh, Brent Arrington, uh, Billy Reeder. Um, but you guys, uh, it, it was a low score in first half too, wasn't it? Yeah, low scoring. I think we went in the 31-26. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we just, you know, we missed a ton of free throws early and, and you know, but part of it was, you know, Moorhead wasn't really trying to push tempo either, so I think I think that had a lot to do with it. Okay, well you saw Jeffrey Moss there uh, hit a, a nice uh, breakaway dunk and then he hit a three. He had a great game with a season high 23 points. Uh, and the Racers were up 11 to 6 early. Uh, you notice when this game was over, Coach, uh, Cameron Payne played 37 minutes and I think Williams played 39 and Moss played 39. They gave you they gave you good minutes and they were out there almost the entire game. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, you know, everybody says, the guys, yeah. they got media timeouts, they're fine, yeah. fatigue-wise. But, you know, Farrell got in some foul trouble, so that extended Jarvis's minutes. Wayne came in and did a good job. And like you said, Moss, he just kind of the silent assassin, uh, had a really good game for us. Uh, this was the uh, beginning of the second half, but, uh, and you got a good breakaway there by Moss. But there at the end of the first half, they turned it over inside 10 seconds, and you guys got, got you a quick basket. Well, that was a big play. It was a good defensive possession. Cam got a good steal, and then Moss was able to hit that floater at the end. Okay, so we're into the second half near uh, about six minutes in. That was a nice uh, uh, rebound and put back by Williams uh, after the missed uh, three. And then uh, later on, the, the Racers continue to lead up by 46-40. Uh, here, Coach, this is about the moment where I thought you guys were going to run away with it. Uh, you went up right here as Moss hit this shot at the buzzer of the, of the shot clock. As it turns out, the shot clock should have reset anyway, but you guys came out okay on that. And then Payne hit a big three there. Um, you know, I thought you guys were going to run away with it, but it did get a little tight, but you guys hit some big shots. Well, that, that shot by Moss, and, and just jokingly, you know, we shoot that every day at the end of shoot around, but. Uh, that put us up 11, and yeah, it should have reset. Fortunately, we made the shot because uh, it didn't reset, but we gave up a three. Uh, you know, it was a penetrating kick three. That's going to happen sometimes. They cut it to eight, 
a uh, poor job and underneath that of bounds execution. I call timeout and you come out of a timeout, you got to be locked into what we're doing. Not a very good screens and not a very good uh, action uh, coming out of the timeout. So we turned it over, probably should have took another timeout just to be safe right there instead of turning it over. But that cut it to six, then it was to three and uh, Seymour's big three, which you saw was big. Jarvis got the and one. Cam made a big pull up about 19 footer. Mm -hmm. That was big. and. We were, you know, we were threatened, but you always felt like you had we were going to we were going to get through the game. But credit Moorhead, um, they did a terrific job of just making it a tough physical uh, game on the road. Okay, well let's take a look at the box score here and uh, just take a look at it. The Racers ended up shooting 51 percent on 22 of 43. Uh, great game by Jeffrey Moss, eight out of 11 from the field uh, for 23 points. That was his season high. And then defensively, the Racers did a good job on Moorhead State. They only had 17 field goals in the game, and the Racers win it to open up OVC play 66 to 57. All right, Coach, so let's backtrack just real quick and go back to uh, December 30th. It was the Alabama A&M game, and we're just going to roll some of that tape and not necessarily break it down, but just talk about uh, it, was, it was a big win for the Racers. You held uh, Alabama A&M to 39 points, uh, but that was coming off of an eight-day Christmas break. And uh, I know you were very proud of the guys for the way they came out of the break and, and really played well that night. Yeah, it's good scheduling. That, 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 that's a good schedule game right there to get back from the break and, and have a game like that before you get into conference play. So we did a good job being able to fit that game in. But anytime you hold a Division One team to 39 points is a positive thing. And we were able to you know, make some shots and really be locked in defensively. So it's a good win. to continue to gain some confidence going into conference play and, and get the Christmas rust off of us. Yeah, the Racers certainly did that as you take a look at some of those big plays, 76-39, and that was the uh, last game uh, of 2014, and uh, the Racers got a big win over Alabama and A&M, and now we're sitting here today uh, with the Racers uh, getting ready to go on the road again. You've got two big games this week at Tennessee Tech and Jacksonville State. The Jacksonville State game's a rare Sunday game, Coach. Yeah, well, great. It's a good thing. You know, you obviously love to play on Saturdays, but the Sunday's a great thing because it gets us a chance to play on national television on CBS Sports. It's great to have a package with them and ESPN, uh, ESPNU, and hopefully we continue to, our league can really start to expand that package and, and get weekly games. You know, once a week have everybody, you know, have somebody in our league, whether it's ESPNU or CBS Sports. Uh, it's terrific. So, but. Tech's going to be, you know, both those teams, the interesting stat on both those teams, I think they're 14-0 and at home. Either 12-0 and combined or 14-0 and combined they at lost home. Game. Neither team has lost a game at home. So it's going to take a, a great effort. I'm not even thinking about Jacksonville. That's a, shoot, that's almost yeah. a full week <laughs> yeah, away. Right, so right. we just want to get in the gym today, get ourselves better, and we'll slowly start getting ourselves integrated with Tennessee Tech, you know, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday, and then get on the road. and. It's always tough playing over there. Uh, you know, last two years we've been over there. We we, we didn't go last year, but previous two years came down. You know, though Isaiah's senior year was just a nasty game, and then you know, uh, we, we my, should we should frame that box yeah, score because you know, it might be the the yeah, worst box score. Yeah, in history it, uh, <laughs> and they made it ugly, and that's what yeah, people are going to yeah. try to do. And and we've got to just stay the course in those games. Yeah. Well, coach, uh, before we let you go, uh, let's just talk a little bit about um, the attitude of this team right now. And I know uh, sports is full of cliches, uh, but I think sports works that way sometimes. And we know about the old thing, uh, take it one game at a time, and if the creeks don't rise and all that kind of stuff. But you, you did something with this team. You, you broke it down into 30 days uh, about a month ago. Tell us about that a little bit and, and tell us, I think, you're, you're, are you to the end of the 30 days now? Yeah, the day of the yeah. Moorhead State game was day 30. And so now I think we're integrated and in, in accustomed to how we need to do things. Uh, you know, you go into the season, there was so much hype. Um, everybody kind of gets ahead of themselves. Everybody wanted to be, what are we, 11 to 15? Everybody wanted to be 15 and 0 right now. Right. And that's just, you know, <clears throat> I, I argue this all the time is, you know, we've had some very good wins. And our league's top teams need to start getting recognition yeah. for things they do. And, and without having to do something just absolutely crazy, unbelievable, yeah. crazy. Like, like 23 and 0. You know, <laughs> you know, 14 and 1, 15 yeah, and yeah. 0. You yeah. know what I mean? You're 11 and 4, 12 and 3. You've had good wins, tough losses. You should be able to start getting some recognition. So that's something we really got to do a great job from a league. 
You know, and that's why you want your team to do well, league to do well outside of league play. You know, but we just broke it down. We just got back to the basics, stopped looking ahead, stopped analyzing every game, and really just got back to, hey, let's build, rebuild our foundation. Let's get back to doing what we believe in. Let's start being unselfish. And I told in the locker room the other day before the Moorhead game, the toughest thing in life to do is be unselfish uh, because everybody wants it, them to, it to be about them. Right. To everybody get the accolades, everybody get the financial you know, uh, endorsements. But if you can be unselfish, the reward's a lot greater at the end of the day mm -hmm. and because it's a shared experience. So these guys have done a good job uh, of that. Uh, we've made good strides, but we've got a long way to go, and that's what you got to keep it in perspective. And we just want to win. You know, everybody says win the day. We just want to have a good day today. And they'll get in here in a couple hours at 11, and we'll watch film, we'll lift, and then we'll get back at it on the floor this afternoon. But it was just a 30-day. You know, Coach Kennedy used to always say, you know, and, and this was talking about reading the Bible, you know, you, you read it for 30 days, it becomes a habit. Or right. You do anything for 30 days, it becomes a habit. And so it was ironic that day 30, when we started that, the day after Nashville, the 30th day was opening of conference. And yeah. you showed us we had to kind of grit out that game to win it. Yeah, and I don't know if you could have uh, done that a month ago. No, you know, we yeah. just, uh, you know, our team stuck together. Uh, they've done some good things. I'm proud of them, but we, we've got a long way to go. You know, we got a long, long way to go. We got a rough, tough, tough road trip. You know, open up three on the road on the league. You can't look at it like that. And I, we've just tried to break it down one game at a time, day at a time. And, We've got Tech on Thursday, but Monday is about Murray. Well, I, I'm very privileged to be around this program uh, on a daily basis, and we, we hope this show kind of gives the fans a little bit of insight because it's a daily thing, it's, a, it's, a, it's an hourly thing, and that's what you, I think you've done a good job of breaking it down into what do we got to do today? Because you can't play the Thursday game on Monday, you're going to play it Thursday and uh, today is a day of practice so well listen coach I appreciate you stopping in we always talk about how busy Mondays are yeah uh, so it's it is busy appreciate you sitting yeah no us. problem I enjoyed happy new year uh, racer nation and we'll see you uh, in Cookville you yes. got to get to Cookville we need a good following over there okay we'll see you next time here in the racer report and get out and see the racers and as we leave you here today let's uh, thank our sponsors we'll see you next time on the racer report 2-3 it looks like. Pass goes to the free throw line into the left corner. Three on the way. T.J. Sapp buries it. Blocked by Farrell. It is Payne getting it to Sapp. Breakaway stop! Cam Payne with the heads up play. To the racers, Payne one hands it to Moss. Squares his feet, shoots the three, and hits it. Those feet were set, Neil. Just as you said, when he gets them set. They don't have odds. It's three on four. Payne spins. Looks, gets it inside to Williams, finger roll up and enemy through contact. Skip pass goes right side to Payne. Payne penetrates inside the free throw line, throws up a crazy shot off the glass and in. Before picking it up and now he crosses the center stride. Gets a screen from Farrell, left side, Moss sets his feet and hits another three. There's that aggressiveness that... Out of the hands of Cotton, racers rebound. Payne jump pass, left side, Sapp catch and shoot three, hit it. T.J. Sapp so confident now. Left corner three by Sapp in the air and good. Wow. The, the streak continues. And off comes to Moss. Flomo right side. Now right corner three on the way. And Seymour decides to get into the act by burying one two. Brings it deep on the wing. And it's stolen by Seymour. Intercepted in a coast to coast drive for the layup in the Regents Bank Bank shot. He has only two, but he has five assists. Bain drives in, takes a bump, hits the floater from 10. Comes it against full court pressure. Finds Farrell. Gets it to Payne. Three on three fast break. He pulls up for the 18 footer and buried it. Carroll for the easy rebound, he missed it, point blank range, but Williams put it up and in. Jonathan Farrell with a real smart play on the defensive end. The last dead ball, that will you lob, almost went in by Payne, rebound, Moss puts it up and in. Neil, that's three possessions in a row. To finds Williams, now Seymour, jump pass finds Payne, inside gets it to Williams for the stuff. I tell you, Cam Payne just takes that crab dribble right from Langston, gets it, Right side, gets it to Seymour, contested three, good! He will dribble toward the free throw line, hooks it inside to Williams for an open dunk. Very nice, paint first there. Jeff throws it back out top to Houston. It's loose on the floor, Farrell digs it out. It's thrown 
tipping it to himself. It is Williams, and he finger rolls it up and in. By Sam, poked away by Farrell, gets the steal, finds Moss in traffic. He leads Williams, he stopped it, my goodness. Wow, what a pass by Jeffrey Moss. Now to Plomo, the elbow extended, whips it inside for Farrell and the slam dunk. Right side goes to Matthew Cotton, and it's stolen by Flomo, or excuse me, Seymour to Flomo, and the left hand shot off the glass and in by Moss. Just down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Looks for room to shoot, jacks up the three, buried it. He'll rush it across the mid-stripe, gets a two-on-two -two break, shovels it to Langston, who fumbled it, put it up, and it rolls in. It's a screen from Langston, gets an opening, drives inside and lays it up and in. Seymour for an open three, and he missed it. Langston rebounds back up, it's no good, but he tipped it up and in. Right. Low puts it side of the rim, no good. Tried to shovel it in, but it's deflected. Seymour picks it up for the alley-oop, lob, it's stomped in! Moss to Williams. I'm telling you, Jarvis Williams, made, he made a play. Dribbles, crossover. Finds Moss, takes it in the paint, puts it off the side of the rim, no good, but put up and in by Farrell. Doesn't go, rebound by Cam Payne. He scans the floor, throws left side, Moss shoots a three and hit it. And on the rebound, it's picked out of there by Flomo, coast to coast drive, finger roll up and in. The Racer Report with Steve Prohm is brought to you by Ruth Brothers Wine and Spirits, serving you for 50 years with two locations in Paducah, Kentucky. And by Pepsi Mid-America. Sign up today at Pepsi.com to earn Pepsi experience points and earn rewards. And by Campus Evolution Villages in Murray, the best in student living. Call 270-767-1818 to plan your tour today. And by Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here.